Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome back to The Simple Quilter. Now today I am covering a very important topic and that is protecting your fabric investment. We spend a lot of money on the quilts we use to quilt with and we do need to be sure we are protecting them. Now there are, today I'm going to cover five things that can damage your quilts. Now, as you're watching this video, if you have some comments you'd like to share about protecting your fabrics or uh, ways that you store your fabrics, please put that in the comments below. Lots of viewers do look at the comments and um, we can all learn from other people, so be sure to leave that in the comment bu comments below. And the number one is light from outdoors and indoors. So be sure you're protecting your fabrics from those lights. Now the best way you can see here I have my made the majority of my fabric stash here and what I do is simply put it behind doors. I have windows on this side that let light in so I want to be sure those fabrics are protected from that light. Now, it's not just outdoor light that we have to protect our fabrics against, it's also indoor light. Um, in my quilt room, especially when I'm filming, I have very bright lights and that can damage your fabric as well as just the lights in the room. Now, a lot of us <laughs> get more powerful lights as we age because it becomes more difficult to see, but just remember, those lights can be damaging your fabrics. A lot of quilters store fabric in containers, and we'll talk about container storage in a little bit, but remember, if this is a clear box, plastic container you're storing it in, the light can still get to it. So you could end up with light damage along whatever side is being exposed to the light. So don't think your fabrics are safe just because you have them in a container. As I've told you before, I'm trying to reorganize my quilt room and it's taken me a while because I really want to oh, find a place for everything. I'm not sure I'm going to meet that goal, but I'm certainly trying. Now, so one of my goals is to get my fabrics out of the light. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that with every single one, but the ones that I can't, I'm going to drape a clean cloth, uh, like a sheet over those. Now, I have quilts on the top, and right now they're all covered with a clean sheet to protect them from the light and the incredible dust from the dust storms that we've been having. So, um, if you can't totally get it out of the light in your room, maybe you can put a clean sheet over it to protect it from light damage. The second thing you want to protect your fabric from is moisture. You don't want your quilts getting that moldy, mildewy smell and damage from mold. Now, one thing you can do is you can use a de dehumidifier. In one of our rooms, well actually in Wes's hobby room, we use a de de dehumidifier in there because I don't know why, but that room seems to have more moisture than the other rooms in our house. Now, we do live in a very dry area, so uh, moisture from the environment really isn't that big of a concern for me where we live. But in some places uh, across the U.S. and even in other countries, it is a big concern. You can use a desiccant, and that is a substance that induces the state of dryness. And those come in the form of like those little um, silica gel packets that sometimes you find in your purse and in your shoe boxes when you purchase those. And then there's other types of desiccants that you can buy that come in cans to put in areas that have a lot of moisture. But don't store your fabrics in the attic or in a super damp basement because that does leave it susceptible to damage from that moisture. Now, I think it's important. We used to live in a house that had a basement and I tried to store my fabric 
up off the floor in case the basement flooded. And I've heard lots of stories about fabric getting ruined because a basement flooded. So you want to be sure you're protecting your fabric from potential floods if that could be a potential issue for you. Also, those of you that live in really moist climates, be sure you're using a pin that's not going to rust because I have seen fabric that's had rust damage from the pins that have been left in there, especially uh, pins from yesteryear. A lot of the pins today are stainless steel, but just be careful about leaving pins in your fabrics, especially your UFOs. Um, for long periods of time when you live in those moist climates. Now the third thing you want to protect your fabric from is little critters and that would include bugs and rodents. Now the two biggest categories of bugs that damage our fabric are cloth eating moths and carpet beetles. Now not all the moths you see are cloth eating moths and the cloth eating moths are typically attracted to wool. Now the thing is you're not really going to see an infestation in your fabrics from these uh, little critters. You're not going to see them crawling around on your fabrics. Well you might see the larva but the adults like the adult the adult carpet beetles they don't feed on the cloth. They lay their larvae there and the larvae eats the fabrics. Now there are some other bugs that can cause damage too, like silverfish. Now silverfish don't feed on the fabric themselves, but they eat on things that are on the surface of fabric like starch. Um, also crickets and cockroaches can cause damage to fabric. Now. Um, I didn't see this in the literature, but I think flies can cause damage because I've seen the specks that flies leave and I don't want any of that on my white or light backgrounds or really any of my fabrics, but they're sure going to show up on your um, neutral background fabrics. Now the silverfish, the crickets and the cockroaches, they don't, they're not ones that cause uh, a lot of damage to fabrics but they do have the potential to um, eat and damage some fabrics. Now, you do have to be careful about rodents. Now, mice don't eat the fabrics. They just shred them up and use them for nesting. The females do. Now, if you see that, beware, because if she's making a nest, it's likely there's going to be more little rodents coming along soon. So it is important to protect our fabrics from those. Now, there's lots of things you can do. Now, I read uh, different things about ways to protect your, uh, home, your fabric against things. Now, the things that I do is we do have an exterminator that comes to spray our home regularly. And um, that does include uh, treatments or traps just in case we have any rodents that wander onto our property or into our home. So those, that is one way to protect them. You can protect them by putting them behind closed doors. Now rodents, little rodents can get everywhere, but I do think that a door does help deter them. You can put them in plastic containers. Now there is a lot of controversy about storing your fabrics in plastic containers. Um, I tried to find out to see how damaging those could be, but I really couldn't find the information that I was looking for. But this is how I feel about it. In the environment that I live in, we don't have a high high humidity here so I'm not worried about moisture getting into the fabric cases. Um, you know I've been quilting for 30 years and I don't know if that's long enough to damage fabrics but I do store some of my fabrics in plastic containers. All of my UFOs are stored in plastic containers but I do think if possible it would be good not to store them in the plastic 
plastic containers. Now, some people store them in cardboard boxes, and that is really not a good solution, especially uh, if you are in an area where they can get damp. But you could store them in, in uh, acid and lignin-free boxes like what they use at a museum, but that's not practical for most of us because we don't have the space to store those big large boxes, but if you do, that might be one way you can help protect your fabrics from um, the things that we've discussed so far. Okay, another important thing that I think that we need to protect our fabrics from is dust and lint. So for the area that I live in, we have lots of dust. It doesn't matter how good your windows and doors are, dust finds your, its way into your home. So again, I put fabric behind doors. I keep fabrics in containers. Uh, I've been covering my quilts with a clean uh, cloth to help keep the dust off of them. Another thing you can do is don't store your fabrics under a vent because vents, you know how they blow in dirt and collect dirt and get dust and lint all over what's directly under them. So I don't store my fabrics in areas directly under um, an air vent and our air vents are up in the ceiling so that is an issue for me to consider when I'm trying to protect my fabric. Now the last thing you want to protect your fabric from is oils such as those you would find in wood. So do not store your fabrics in cedar chests or on uh, woods that are untreated where those oils can get directly onto your fabrics. Um, they stain your fabrics and that is just not a good option for storing your fabrics. Now, now don't forget to put any tips you might have on fabric storage and protection in the comments list in the comments below. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Please share with a friend and as always leave those comments. I love to get those comments and I try to reply to each and every one. I also want to thank each and every one of you for watching my video. 